Hey, so you guys know I'm a Callaway guy, right? I have, I use the Callaway Chrome Soft X triple track golf ball. Love this golf ball. I think it's fantastic. I'm a Callaway guy, but I got to show you something. I've heard so much about this golf ball, this company called Encore. Now, the people at the club were raving about this, this golf ball. And I was like, okay, I finally have to check it out. What is so cool? What is so good about these golf balls? Because, you know, golf balls are golf balls. You got dimple patterns. You got different cores, different materials, soft cover, hard cover, good around the green. You know, it's, it's hard. Golf balls are one of those things where I don't know much about it, but I had to dig into this. Guess what? This is what's interesting about the Encore golf ball. This ball was designed initially to go straighter. How did they do that? Well, here's how they did it, because I did the research on this thing. They decided, the first golf ball they produced had a liquid, had a metal core. It was a metal core. Now, their technology created basically perimeter weighting inside of a golf ball, which meant that when you hit it, it would straighten, the, straighten it out on your bad shots. I thought, holy cow, that's exactly what I like. I like to minimize curvature and hit the ball as straight as possible. So I had to dig into it a little bit. Well, they had the Encore golf ball, which is a fantastic golf ball. And then they came out with a tour version, the Vero X1. So what I want to do is I want to get a hold of these guys at this company, talk to somebody at the company, find out more about this product, because I think it's outstanding. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single point swing. Hey, welcome to the channel today. I wanted to introduce Steve Colton. He is with Encore Golf, and we're going to talk about a subject that I get questions about all the time, and it's golf balls. What's the best golf ball to use, uh, the different types of golf balls, performance, how a golf ball performs, the feel, the distance, all those things. And look, I don't know much about golf balls. I know what they feel like. I know when I play them, I get different types of feels, different distances from balls. So we finally have an expert on the channel today that's going to help us kind of navigate through what we should be looking for in a golf ball and also talk about their product, which I, you know, look, I was introduced to the Encore products probably about a year ago, and now they have a, a, a tour ball that I've been kind of messing around with and playing with, which I really like. But here's the thing about this is that so many people have been walking up to me saying this is one of the greatest golf balls that they've played. I just had to get Steve on here to talk about this golf ball and these products. So Steve, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for being on the channel. And, uh, yeah, Todd, I pre appreciate the opportunity. Thank, thanks for those, those kind words. Yeah, so look, I got to admit, you know, I, I don't know a lot about golf balls. I know, I, you know, I, I was a Titleist guy at one point, and then now I'm a Callaway guy. I play Callaway balls, and then I've been uh, playing around with your golf ball. And, you know, what I look for in a golf ball is obviously performance around the greens. The feel is a big deal when you, you kind of get to the high level of golf. People always want more distance in a golf ball. And I look, obviously, for trajectory, how the ball flies and how it reacts out of the rough and things like that. So I'm, I'm into the performance of a golf ball. But, you know, a lot of people don't understand golf balls. And I, I, I quite frankly, don't understand golf balls either. So could you do me a favor and just kind of talk about the, the business of a golf ball and what, what it is and what, what you're trying to, trying to actually produce when you make a golf ball, kind of start wide for me and just let's talk about golf balls in general. Sure. And, and I think, you know, unlike some other sports, right, with standardized um, balls, golf is unique. There's many different um, types of golf balls, many different constructions, many different price points. And, and you've, you've got that element of human psychology, right? And, and when you listen to golfers, talk about what kind of golf balls they need. You know, some are, some are really price point driven. Um, some, as you mentioned, are, are performance. You know, they want to know the specs and, and how it performs, um, you know, out on the course. Um, others are more focused around the green. So, I mean, there's, there's a tremendous amount of variety in terms of what, um, you know, what consumers, golfers are looking for and what companies, whether it's Encore, our company or others are providing. Um, and, and we, um, you know, at this stage in, in our life cycle, we can say we've, we've got a, a solid golf ball for, um, you know, every type of golfer, we've got a great entry level ball. 
to two-piece ball or a bump ball. Um, great for beginners, slower swing speeds. Um, it's a 55 compression. So that's kind of a, a great start starting point ball for us. Um, and then we've got, um, as you mentioned, the Elixir and the new Vero X1 Tour Ball. Um, and, and we can certainly get into those. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a personal decision for golfers. Um, and, you know, if you look at My Golf Spy, um, they've done a good job of doing ball tests, getting information into the consumer's hands about the, the performance, the quality, the, you know, the QC that goes into the manufacturing side of the business, um, you know, and, and they, they rank um, Golf Digest is another one that does their, um, um, their hot list. And we've been fortunate to have, have won a number of awards. Um, the Elixir won two golds on, on the hot list there. But those are great resources for consumers out there who are trying to find a ball for them. One of the things my golf spy says is, um, you know, pick a ball, whatever ball it is that you end up liking, just stick it out for a season. You know, um, certainly, you know, try, try your different brands, your different balls. Um, when you find one that you like, um, because this way you're, you're dialed in with your distances. Um, you get comfortable with the feel, as you mentioned, the trajectory. Um, so you start to, you know, really get, get a good sense of how a ball is going to perform in all different conditions. And, uh, and I think that's pretty good advice. You know, I think that's great advice. Matter of fact, when I was driving over here today and I knew I was going to be talking to you, I was thinking, you know, kind of like what's, what do I think is the most important thing that, that should happen when people are, because I get asked all the time from my customers and, and my students and I, I'm at golf schools and I say, hey, what's the best golf ball? And I'm like, you know, to me, number one is not changing your golf ball all the time uh, is important because then you develop the feel and the distances that you hit that particular ball. And, and I don't know, you know, with the single plane swing and the things we teach at our academy, it's all about consistency. And right. you should practice and play and use the same equipment so you can develop the same consistency and feels and all that stuff. So I was thinking that might be the most important part of this whole conversation is like stick with something, stick with a particular ball. And what, what goes into the design of a golf ball? I'm always curious about, you know, you have engineers, you have a number of engineers you work with. Tell me what goes into it. I know you have the materials you're using. You have the, you know, obviously the dimple designs, you have the different layers on the inside, the, the core of the golf ball and that, and the mantle and you, what you mentioned. Tell me what goes in. I, I'm just super curious about the engineering of a golf ball and what goes into it. And not, not just the testing, but you know, how do you choose the materials? How do you, how do you choose the dimple designs? Why do you change? I mean, what, is there a benefit to one dimple design versus another? How many dimples on a golf ball? I think this is all the curious stuff that I know. I, I know a little bit about it, but not enough that an engineer, I'd love to hear you tell me about what goes into that engineering. Part of what attracted me to um, Encore was was the technology people involved. Um, Doug Dufo is our chief technologist and um, serial entrepreneur. Um, you know, the, you know, think, you can think of the mad scientist in the garage. Although he's not mad, he's he's um, perfectly, um, you know, a normal guy, but just just brilliant, you know, and and truly does have a decked out garage where he is messing with designs and um, Doug, Doug, along with three other engineers, um, were all admittedly bad golfers um, and were out golfing and, and wanted to, to um, figure out a way to make a golf ball fly straighter. So that was the genesis of Encore was um, how can we move the weight to the outside of the ball? And they started with the hollow metal core prototypes um, which were anywhere from 40 to 70% straighter. Um, the issue with those balls were where they felt like a rock and they lost some distance. Um, so we, we've, you know, over the, it's been an incremental process. You know, we, we started with that really out of the box design. I mentioned bringing in Calabria who had more of the industry expertise. Uh, Keith Blakely, our chairman, is a materials science guy um, involved in graphene, nanotechnology, aerospace, automotive, you know, supplying all sorts of materials to these industries. Um, so we've got a really a, a unique mix of outside, um, you know, materials experts, industry, you know, inside experts like Calabria, 
um, and a few others who specialize in polymers. Um, so they they meet, you know, they they go over, um, as you mentioned, different materials, different you know, different specs, different um, hardness, compression, um, layers, all all of the things that go into building a ball. Um, and then there's prototyping, there's testing, there's surveys. Um, so it's it's a lot. There, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that even I'm not really privy to. Um, I, I can help with the testing and feedback, uh, you know, from our customers about what what kind of products they want to see. Um, but ultimately, we've got a, a a team of experts that are the best of the best, and they work pretty quickly. You know, at some of the bigger companies, you know, they might have more people but it'll take them longer to get to market. Whereas we have a, a smaller, really dedicated group of engineers. Um, just as soon as they had finished the Vero X1 ball, um, they already had, you know, they were already talking about the next ball and how they had, you know, some cool lighter core materials that would help perimeter weight the ball even more. And so that's just kind of the mentality is that um, every, every ball that we produce has got to be better than the last one. Um, and we've people that have followed us from from the early days, from the hollow metal core designs to um, um, up until the elixir and the Vero will will attest to that um, methodology. Well, go back for a second. I, this is interesting to me. So the story, the development of Encore, the story is that you basically wanted to build a ball that was straighter. Is it, it, so. How did that come about? I'd be interested to see that because how do you do that? Now, I know you went to a primer weighted or a metal core at first, right? So yep. tell, tell me about kind of that, that whole evolution of how the company was, because this is where the, the big idea, right? The big idea is, is we want to go, first of all, the golf ball goes too crooked, you know, <laughs> especially for the amateur guy. So we want to build, build a golf ball that goes straighter, that's more consistent for the average guy. Tell me about that. That's super. I'm sure interested in that because that really goes a lot with what I'm teaching as well as we want to make the game easier, more fun, and uh, you know, skilled golfers are skilled golfers, but it's the amateur golfer that's out there, the weekend guy that wants to play better. And so, how is the how are you able to do that? Tell me a little more about that. Yeah. So, uh, we're all of the golf ball manufacturers are. Um, operating under similar constraints with respect to the USGA. So the USGA sets a limit in terms of how fast the ball can go, um, you know, the initial velocity, total distance, symmetry of the dimple pattern, the diameter, the weight of the ball. So um, you've, got a, you've got quantifiable metrics that you have to meet for the ball to be conforming. Um, so you know, there are limits to how much you can do on the distance side. Obviously, we're, we're all pushing the limits on that um, creatively. Um, but they really said, okay, so, you know, there, there's only so much you can do on the distance side. You know, how, how can we help build a ball that's more consistent, more stable on miss hits, um, and, and, you know, ultimately fly straighter and, um, you know, whether it was their knowledge of what Callaway did with the big Bertha, you know, that started ushered in that era of drivers that we see today, um, you know, or, you know, Ping was big on the heel toe waiting with the putters. And, and then you saw the, uh, the manufacturers on the irons, um, you know, go to that high MOI, that hollow kind of design. Um, they just, they just thought, you know, Let's try to move the mass to the outside. So if you can imagine, imagine a marble, um, basically they had a hollow metal shell that they designed and welded um, and worked out the manufacturing processes um, to embed it within a, a golf ball. And, you know, it, it definitely was straighter and, and a lot straighter. But um, as we learned when we were out there um, you know, selling the ball, it had some deficiencies too. Um, so, uh, and, and that's, that's the give and take of a golf ball, right? You, there's any kind of change you make, there's usually a trade-off, you know, whether it's, um, you know, the speed of the ball, 
the compression, the feel, you know, all of those different things that you design for usually, you know, kind of take away from another aspect of the ball. So, um, but that's the great part about it is there's tremendous amount of variety out there um, for each golfer. So, so yeah, they, they started with that design. I hit some of the early prototypes and, um, you know, was at a point in my game where um, I didn't really know where the ball was going. And I felt like that hollow core concept really, it gave me a bit of confidence. Um, and, you know, when you have, a, when you have that feeling, you swing freer. Um, so, you know, mentally it was, um, it was kind of self-reinforcing where I just felt looser. And I, and I said, wow, this is, you know, this is really pretty cool what they're doing. Um, and of course we've evolved that, that hollow core where we basically blew it up. So we've got, um, you know, more of a traditional polymer core and mantle, um, but we've embedded that, those metal particles in the outside layer of the ball. So you don't have that hard feel. It's, um, it feels like, you know, like you'd expect a pro V or, or top level tour ball to feel, um, but you're getting that benefit of the perimeter weighting. Nice. I love that idea because, you know, at the end of the day, um, and I, I'd be interested more in the perimeter weighting idea because that's got to be new. That, is, that, is that new? Is that, is that proprietary to Encore, is perimeter weighting in a golf ball? Yeah. yeah. We, we, have, we have a number of patents around it and, and kind of call them trade secrets in terms of, um, you know, how we embed certain materials and um, – change the, you know, the modulus, the stiffness of the core and mantle that, that dynamic between a soft core and stiff mantle, um, that that's a lot of the magic behind, um, behind our golf balls. Yeah. I like that. For me, one of the things I complain about with some of the other golf balls out there, just to name a few is what they do out of the rough. Like when I hit a shot into the rough and, and how the ball flies out of the rough, like what uh, under certain conditions, because off the tee and in normal conditions, uh, the high performance balls all do pretty well. But it's when you get in certain conditions, whether it's wet conditions, windy conditions, and in the rough is where you start seeing the performance of a golf ball really, really have an effect. What do you, tell me a little bit about that. How do, you, how do you guys monitor that? And you got certain designs on the cover. You have different, you have a three piece. And this, this, uh, this X1, this Vero X1 is a four piece. Is that correct? Is this a four piece? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So tell me so, about that kind of technology and why why the different parts of the golf ball, why 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 would one one guy select the 55 compression two piece versus a four piece? So kind of go through some of that. So with the with the two piece ball um, like our Avant, um, you know you, you're you have less material, right? Less layers. So um, for one, your cost is going to be um, a lot less. It's it's a soft serlin cover. Um, which isn't quite as high grade as the urethanes. Um, so a urethane cover is typically what you're gonna, you're gonna see on your tour ball category, um, but not everyone necessarily needs that. Um, with our two piece ball, we designed it to launch really high into the greens for those um, amateurs, beginners, seniors. Um, so it'll, it'll basically um, help you keep it on the green. Um, and you'll, you can even notice it when you're chipping around the greens. Um, it just lofts up really high in the air. You know, in the, in the tour category, right, yourself, um, pretty much anyone that, that um, you know, is, is a decent stick, a, you know, a, a lower handicap golfer, they're going to want that tour quality ball. And it's primarily the cover. Um, you know, certainly there's three piece, there's four piece, there's five piece. Um, our engineers say, you know, after about three, four piece, you know, it, it's not really clear to them that there's a benefit from additional layers. Um, it certainly sounds more impressive, right? But, um, from a performance standpoint, you know, you kind of, you, you kind of max out, um, what those additional layers can do for you. Um, between the Elixir and the Vero, as you mentioned, it, it goes from a three to a four piece, um, We've got a little thinner cover on the Vero, the new tour ball. So you're going to get a little more grip around the greens with that. Um, and that also allowed us to widen the mantle layer. So that, that layer just underneath the cover. Um, and that's important because 
part of our story is about perimeter weighting in golf balls, uh, creating a high moment of inertia golf ball. Um, Callaway was the first to do it with the drivers. Um, you know, the big Bertha kind of ushered in that movement of, you know, high MOI clubs. Then you saw it with the irons um, and, and then the putters followed, right? Heel toe weighting, perimeter weighting in the irons and the putters. Um, and Encore was really one of the first to, to focus on that in all of our golf balls. And um, it's not as sexy as distance, right? Everyone wants a long golf ball, and we certainly are just as long, if not longer, than the, the top brands out there. But um, to combine that with the high MOI and the control, um, I think is really important for amateur golfers, um, you know, who often struggle with consistency, um, you know, which, which is great what you're doing with, with Mo Norman and the single plane and, and trying to create that consistency because um, it really does make a difference. Um, and um, so, so that's a unique part of our ball. You mentioned, you know, you were curious about the rough and the wind. Um, one of the things maybe you've heard um, from some of the players in, in your area playing the elixir is how great it is in the wind. Um, it, it is a slightly lower launching ball um, and it, it's crosswinds, incredibly stable. Um, keep an eye out for us. Uh, Gary Player is going to be, um, you know, is playing the, the Vero X1 and he's, he, he hit the elixir last year. Um, you might have seen him at the par three contest at the Masters yeah. um, in the opening tee shot with with the ball. So we're we're starting to get some more recognition out there on uh, with some of the bigger bigger name players as well. That might be why that might be why you know you see a lot of the guys that I'm at, at the club and and um, you see this ball played a lot. It's windy where we play. Um, ball flight control, the lower trajectories, and I'm not saying low, but just good good solid trajectories into the wind is a must. Um, so that's why this ball has been absolutely great from from my standpoint. That's why I like it so much. But I play in a ton of wind all the time. So control is everything, you know, when it comes to what, where I play. Um, you can't. It's not like you play a golf course where there's no wind and you can kind of hit it up in the air and nothing happens to it. You got to keep. You got to control the ball flight around here. And that's this ball is very stable. And I, I really, to be honest with you, I've only played really the Vero. I haven't really messed what, around with the Elixir at all. But the Vero yeah. is, is a very stable golf ball, which I really like. And it. And I like, I hit the ball high, so it's nice to bring my flight down just a little bit for me. So that was also really nice with this golf ball. So it's a great, it's a great golf ball. And it feels yeah. great. And to, to me, the first place that I take a golf ball is I just go around the greens. You know, I just hit shots around the greens. Does the ball check? Does it, does it react consistently? Am I, I get good feel for my wedges. And then, you know, I, I'm not a distance guy. I mean, of course, you always want a golf ball that, that hits the ball further, but it, it, not at the expense of feel. I guess is what you know I'm looking for, and then it, in when when I get Sirloin covered golf balls and I take them into the rough and they come out of the rough way too fast, so you want that urethane cover out of the rough. And I don't know if people re really understand the difference between the urethane, which which the beautiful thing about this golf ball is that the, the price allows you to get into a urethane ball um, because of the price point. So if 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 you're a Sirloin ball, most people don't know they're even a Sirloin ball. They don't even know what they're playing half the time, but People ask sure. me the question of, Todd, what kind of ball should I play? And I'm like, you need, a, you need to have good feel around the greens, number one, and distance should be your second concern, and then control the golf ball, and then, of course, out of the rough. So those are all considerations when you take a golf ball in effect. Now, you have a fitting program on your website. Is that correct? Yes. We, we've got a ball fitting, and, you know, we wanted to, to offer a sleeve of each of our golf balls, um, so you just fill out, it takes you two minutes, a quick questionnaire about your game, um, you know, your, your swing speed, handicap, um, average score, price point you, you like to, to get into a golf ball at. Um, and we, we basically, you know, calculate all of those answers and, um, you know, spit out a recommendation that we think will be the best ball for you. And then there's a sleeve, a trial sleeve offer. So, um, some people will just buy a dozen and say, you know, I want to try it. Others might want to try a sleeve, um, you know, so kind of try it before you buy, if you will. We're confident that once once um, someone tries the ball, they're going to come back for more. And and we've seen that uh, with with our kind of website analytics and repeat customer purchase. 
rates, they're, they're really high. Um, so we're able to, to do things like that because uh, we, we believe in the products. Yeah. Do you think, so what do you think, if somebody was going to take your golf ball, let's say they, they got a sample from you from, from your website, what, what would you want them to do the first thing if they wanted to go kind of experiment with your golf ball? What's the first thing you'd want them to do to go try the ball? Just as you, you mentioned, start around the green, um, get that feel, um, you know, make sure it's something you're comfortable with, whether it's checking up to your, um, to your liking. Um, others prefer, you know, a ball that might roll out a bit. Um, so that would be my first piece of advice, you know, work, work around the greens, work, you know, maybe a hundred yards out, hit some, you know, pitch shots and, and work your way back to your, to your mid irons, to your, to your driver um, in that order. And just, um, you know, make sure it's something that, that performs and feels the way, the way you want a golf ball too. But no, this is fantastic. I got one more question that I want to ask. Do you ever, when, when, you're, when you're looking at golf balls like this, and your engineers maybe could answer this question, do you ever create a golf ball that um, after you get it designed and you get it out there, it performs differently for the average guy versus the tour player? I've always been curious about this because, um, for example, the, the X1, if you, if you take it to the average guy and he hit it, would, would a, since it's a more of a performance ball, does a, a tour player benefit more from this ball than the average guy? I, I, I wouldn't say that um, just because there, there is no handicap involved with that ball, even at a slower swing speed. Um, you know, if you had a higher swing speed, um, whereas you might, you might hit a, a, you might be capped on the elixir if your swing speed exceeded a certain amount um, with the Vero. Um, that's not true, right? So now, now you can really take advantage of that right. that high swing speed. But for for the majority of amateurs, um, they're you know they won't they won't be handicapped at all by the balls. Um, whether they want to try the Vero X1, um, it'll be a little firmer for them. Um, but that comes back to preference. You know, if you if you prefer that firmer feel. Um, great. You can, you can by all means use the Vero X1 regardless of your swing speed. You're still going to compress the ball um, and see those, you know, the distance from it um, and the spin that you want. Um, the Elixir, if you, it's a little lower compression, about 80 compression versus 85 on the Vero. Um, relatively, you know, to other tour balls out there from competitors, um, we're definitely on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of compression. Um, but interestingly, uh, my golf spy noted that we were one of the exceptions where they, they have this thing, you know, basically a soft golf ball is a slow golf ball. Um, and they said with the exception of Encore's Elixir. Interesting. Um, so we, we've kind of, um, with that ball, been able to achieve a really interesting um, balance of that soft feel with maintaining high ball speeds for, for your distance. So nice. um, in the past, you might have to sacrifice a bit of distance if you wanted that soft feel, but with the new materials that we're using, that's not the case. Wow, that's great. So let me just kind of conclude by this. So they can go to your website. I just want to know how they can maybe order some golf balls or at least get some samples from you. So on your website, um, number one, you might want to go get fitted first to find out what kind of golf ball that you'd want. And then you guys, and this is kind of unique, is that you can go online and you guys will send out a sample golf ball or a sample uh, sleeve of golf ball so people can try them. So how does that work? And I, I've never seen that before, but I noticed that it was on your website. Yeah, so um, basically they'll go through the survey and they'll get fit for a particular ball. And then um, they have the option to purchase a sleeve, whether it's the Avant, the Elixir, or the Vero. Um, and then, um, presumably if, if they like that particular ball, they can buy, you know, they can buy a dozen, um, or if they wanted to try another sleeve, we'd be happy to send them that. So it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward on EncoreGolf.com on the website. And we also have, um, bulk, bulk buying discounts for, you know, if you find a ball that you like, um, you know, you get a little bit of a discount per dozen if you buy three dozen instead of one, and even even bigger discount if you buy six. Um, so, 
uh, you know, as great as the prices are for a dozen, they can get even better. And then um, including with, with our loyalty program, um, as you spend over the course um, of a season, um, those, those dollars accumulate, accumulate um, and, and you can get even further discounts, um, you know, once you advance to our birdie level, our eagle level, um, birdie starts at $250 and that's 10% off. Um, and once you hit $500 in spending, it drops to 20% off at Eagle and, and eventually 25% off at Albatross. So, um, well, what you know, I'll do is, um, customers... so on my channel here, if people can go below and they'll see all the links to all the different, um, things on your, on your website where they can go yep. get fit and they also order. So I'll put that all below. So anybody who's watching this can just go and click on the links below and go straight to your website. So it was great. Hey, awesome. thank, thanks for teaching me about this. This is great. I am super excited about this golf ball. Matter of fact, I'm going to be, be using this golf ball now for the next three or four months. I really want to give it a run. I'm going to actually try the Elixir as well. I, I have never tried this ball, so I'm going to give it a shot. Sounds like a awesome. golf ball. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity, Todd. I appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Anytime. And uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch and uh, love to hear more about it. And send me, some, uh, send me some of the videos about the technology. I love the technology behind all these sure. products. I love learning about it and stuff. Just educate my, myself about about the product too as well. So thanks thanks for joining me. Awesome, you got it. Thanks again, Todd. Yep. So one of the most important things to me about a golf ball is how it handles around the green. You know, the softness, the feel, the ability to spin it. Uh, some, you know, if you play a range ball, that's why I don't practice with range balls. A typical range ball is just a two-piece ball with a very hard Sterling cover and it comes off the face very fast and it doesn't spin very well. So just as a word, word of, of note for you, if you're going to go practice like I am right now around this practice screen, make sure you use the same golf balls that you play with. And the whole, the whole process here is if you're going to practice, give the ball that you're going to play with some time to get used to it and do it consistently for a period of time. But I'm going to give these a shot. I'm going to do the Elixir first. Um, this is a, a three-piece ball. It's, it's, a, it's a really high quality. It's a, it's a tour caliber golf ball. And I'm going to just check it out and see how it feels. So what I'll do is just come out and, and hit a few shots where I kind of picked a tricky shot here where you're going to require a little bit of spin. You can see that I don't have a lot of green to work with, but I just want to kind of feel it out here and see how the ball feels on a little shot like this. Definitely had some spin. Hit that one too hard. We'll see what it does. That one I just caught a little bit hard. Really felt good though. And the thing about golf balls too is if, if you take a range ball, it'll come off the face a little faster and a little higher where if the ball has some spin, it comes off a little bit with a little more, a, a lower trajectory and a little bit more check. So these things are coming off pretty good. And that's, that one's gonna be pretty good right there. Not bad, let's hit the Vero now. This one is their tour ball. This is, um, this has another layer inside of it. It's, it's probably a little more playable, a little softer cover. Um, this is the ball that I probably would end up playing here. It's a little more playable around the greens. It's gonna be a little softer. Hit a couple of shots here. Yeah, so this thing has, watch that thing check. So it's got a little more check to it. It came off a little lower, which I like. And it gives, see, the thing about hitting these type of shots with a ball that feels good and not a fastball, like a, a hard range ball, is that you have control. And it's really about consistently having, when you hit, the, you gotta be aggressive on these shots. And see, that has some control on it. Watch that go in there and check. Yeah, so this ball's got a little more feel to me. And I got a little more control. It's not quite, it's not coming off quite as fast. I like this ball. I like this ball a lot. Yeah, see that? A little lower, watch it check. There you go. So that's, that's the ball that I'd want to probably spend some time with right there. So look, every manufacturer has a different levels of golf balls. You got to find the one that it gives you the, the distance and the feel that you want. I like to really get a ball that feels well and it feels really good around the greens. I'll come out here and I'll, I'll, I'll work it and I'll spend time with it. Um, I'll practice with it, hit different shots, bunker shots, long shots, long wedge shots. But that, that ball right there, the X1, the Vero X1, is a great feeling golf ball. And I like the, I like the Elixir as well, but I think the Vero is the one I'm going to go with.